Our Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the understanding. Thank you for keeping us healthy and alive that we can hear your word, understand your word, believe your word, apply your word, and be prepared for glory in heaven. We ask, O oh Lord, you grant us concentration and focus so that everything we hear will penetrate our heart, abide with us, and do good in every life. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Already you understand we've been studying from the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Galatians. And these epistles clear up the way of grace, the way of the cross, and the way to salvation. He actually had been uh, correcting the notion of the Galatians and of the Jewish people. Many of them, after receiving the true saving gospel of Christ, they were going back to Judaism, to the law of Moses, to circumcision, and to all those rites and ceremonies of the old covenant depending on those things for their salvation. And now Paul the Apostle, inspired, led by the Spirit of the Lord, wanted to bring them back to the right way, the way of Christ and the way of the gospel, to abandon the law of Moses, abandon circumcision, abandon all the rites and ceremonies of the Jewish people. Uh, the Jewish dispensation and then come fully unto Christ and he continues now and in the passage we are reading he will be talking about illustration the allegory that image of the sons of Abraham and he spoke about the bondage at Sinai and then the freedom in Zion and it brings us out of the bondage of the law and brings us to the freedom that we have in Christ. And it talks about one son, then the other son. One son, nominal. One son, negligent. And one son, negated that could not get into the kingdom and then he talks about the other son new renewed reborn born again into the kingdom and so we come to the subject today the privilege of sons born after the spirit the privilege of sons born after the spirit we're studying from Galatians chapter 4, reading from verse 21. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? Verse 22. For it is written, it's going to the scriptures, that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bond mage, the other by a free woman. Verse 23. But he that was born of the bond woman he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh and he of the free woman was by promise then in verse 24 which things are an allegory an illustration a portrait a picture an allegory for these are the two covenants the one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. And then verse 25, for this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answered to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. He's talking about the Jewish people. 
and their capital was Jerusalem Jerusalem on earth and because they subjected themselves to the old covenant annulled cancelled but he didn't know he said now they are in Jerusalem and that Jerusalem now is and it's in bondage with her children in verse 26 it says but Jerusalem which is above is free is saying that there is another Jerusalem the new Jerusalem the one above the one that we get to by the redemption we have in Christ by the grace we have in Christ and he said that is above and it is free which is the mother of us all the mother that gave birth to us all in verse 27 it says for it is written rejoice thou barren that beareth not break forth and cry thou that travelest not for the desolate hath many more children than she which has an husband verse 28 now we brethren as Isaac was and the children of promise verse 29 but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit as then he that was born after the flesh born once persecuted him that was born after the spirit born twice born again even so it is now but start he then says nevertheless what says the scripture nevertheless what says the scriptures here paul is giving us an endless timeless principle that whatever you believe the question is what says the scripture are you believing in the law moses don't do that what says the scripture are you trusting in your self effort to get to heaven don't do that what says the scriptures are you thinking your good works your righteous works your self-righteousness will get you to glory it says go check up in the scriptures what says the scriptures do you believe on the lord jesus christ and jesus alone by faith in him alone for you to get to heaven and then judaizers are coming to you and they're saying that is not enough don't listen to them the question you need to ask and answer is what says the scripture does somebody tell you that once you are born again it doesn't matter how you live you are free to act like you used to live that holiness is no more required don't reason with them what says the scriptures is it possible for me without salvation without holiness without purity of heart and then i live like i used to live and i will still get to heaven don't argue go back to the bible find out the question of getting to heaven is so important you cannot leave me to hear say you can leave, not leave me to i feel you cannot leave me to i think you must find out because all the opinions of men will vanish away all the ideas and ideologies of men will vanish away the only thing that will stand on that final day is what the lord had said in the scriptures always go back to the scripture nevertheless what says 
the scripture cast out the bond woman and her son for the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman verse 31 so then brethren we are not children of the bond woman but of the free free from sin free from satan free from the polluted society free from our old sinful habits and free from the chains that bound us we by christ by grace we by the atonement of calvary were made free and it is those who are free and made free by the blood of the lamb and they're free from the old lifestyle they are the people that will get to heaven eventually the privilege of sons born after the spirit three things we're looking at here number one the illustration from scripture number two the identity of two types of sons number three the inheritance of true saints let's look at number one the illustration from the scripture already we've read those verses verses 21 to 26 the allegory the illustration the example that Paul the apostle gave to illustrate what he had to teach so that that illustration will make us think will make us look at the word of God and interpret the word of God appropriately there are three things here number one revelation from the scripture of truth number two record from the scripture for teaching it is the record of scripture not from folklore not from opinions of men it is the record of scripture that we take and teach ourselves about salvation about grace about the path of righteousness that a believer ought to live and about the outcome the final outcome of a life lived in the grace of god above sin without sin conquering overcoming sin records from the scripture for teaching number three receiving all of scripture all receiving all of scripture for our transformation let's look at number one there number one is the revelation the revelation that comes from the scripture of truth that bible you hold in your hand that word of god is referred to as the scripture of truth Daniel chapter 10, reading from verse 21. Daniel chapter 10, verse 21. But I will show thee that which is noted, that which is much, that which is remarkable, that which is significant in the scripture of truth. I will show thee the angel told daniel i reveal to you that which is noted in the scripture of truth and there is none that hold it with me in these things but michael your prince understand there the scripture is the scripture of truth any man any woman any preacher any prophet any evangelist any book any library any author that goes against anything in the bible is a preacher of error is a prophet of error because the scripture is the standard you're looking for truth you want to emphasize the truth go back to the scripture it is the scripture of truth by the way it was an angel that said this and said that the scripture 
the word that God has given us because God cannot lie. His word is the word of truth, is the scripture of truth. We're told in Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 44. Luke 24 verse 44, and he said unto them, that's Christ, these are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. Is the scripture of truth, is the word of God. It tells the sinner how to repent. And it says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. All things must be be fulfilled. He told us, except righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, he shall in no wise get into the kingdom of God. All things must be fulfilled. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man anywhere in any generation no man cometh unto the father except by me all things must be fulfilled it was needful that christ will die and be buried and the third day he will rise again for your salvation all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me, Christ. Concerning me as Savior. Concerning me as the substitute. Concerning me as the final acceptable sacrifice before the Lord. All things reaching concerning Christ must be fulfilled. Concerning me at the sanctifier concerning me at the one that comes and it renews your life it changes your life and it makes you fit for eternity all things concerning me written about me that he will be the one and when he comes he will immerse empower baptize his people in the holy ghost and in fire all things reaching about Christ must be fulfilled. Everything concerning me. Look at verse 45. In verse 45, then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. The scriptures of salvation. The scriptures of transformation. The scriptures that converts us, the scriptures that set us in the way of righteousness for a good eternity. Let's look at verse 46. In verse 46, and he said unto them, Thus it is reaching in the scriptures. And thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Revelation coming from the scripture of truth. Let's look at number two here. Number two is the record from the scripture for teaching. The scripture that is given to us and it is for teaching. It tells us in Galatians chapter 4, looking at verse 23. But he who was of the born woman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. All of us, like that first son of Abraham, were born of the flesh born of the flesh and if we're going to belong to the kingdom of god we must be born of the promise look at verse 24 in verse 24 which things are an allegory 
It's an illustration. It is an example for us to derive teaching and lesson from that. But these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gendered to bondage, which is eager. And then in the first part of verse 30, it says, nevertheless, if you don't understand that allegory, nevertheless, if you don't understand the illustration, nevertheless, ask the question, what says the scripture? We're looking at Romans chapter 15, verse 4. It says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, the stories that we read about in Genesis, about Abraham, about Isaac, about Jacob, about Joseph, the stories we read about in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, about Moses, about the children of Israel, about the rock, about the water that came out of the rock. The stories we read about in Joshua, about how the children of Israel entered into the land of Canaan. All those stories, it says, for whatsoever things were reaching aforetime, were reaching for our learning, that we who are now living through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, the scriptures, the scriptures, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Any hope that is not based on the scriptures is rotting hope. Any hope that is not based on the scriptures will be a disappointing hope. Any hope you have, you know, are you going to heaven? I hope so. Are you going to make it at last? I hope so. Are you going to be accepted, acceptable in the sight of God? Well, I think because of what I do, because of my self-righteousness, because of this, because of that, I hope, ah, any hope that is not based solidly on the scriptures is going to be a disappointing hope. The scripture does not give any hope to the one who has not repented, to the one who has not been converted, to the one who does not have a new life in Christ, to the one who, I'm doing the best I can. I hope God will look at my effort and trial and get me there. No. The hope must be based on what the scripture has said. Nevertheless, what says the scripture for whatsoever things were reaching, aforetime were reaching for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, reading from verse 15, it says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures the holy scriptures what is he called the holy scriptures when the scriptures enter into us the scripture will make us holy if you say you know the scriptures and the scriptures you know makes you unholy you don't have the right interpretation of the holy scriptures if the scriptures you quote and you're trying to comfort yourself with those scriptures, if they make you sinful, if they make you justify sin, if they make you justify doing evil, you're not using the scriptures all right, you are corrupting the scriptures. It is the holy scriptures and the holy scriptures will make us holy. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. In verse 16 it says, All scripture, 
is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect. The scripture never justifies imperfection, impurity, iniquity, transgression, evil. The scriptures come to us to take us out of sin, out of imperfection, that the man of God, the child of God, may be perfect, matured, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I pray that the scriptures will have effective work in every life in Jesus' name. Number three here, number three, receiving all of scripture. Receiving all of scriptures, not sifting, not choosing and rejecting, not casting off some scriptures and accepting other scriptures. I accept the scriptures on healing. Go ahead. You must also accept the scriptures on holiness. You cannot say, I accept the scriptures of faith. You must also accept the scriptures on faithfulness. You must not say, I accept the scriptures on the sacrifice of Christ. You must also accept the scriptures on the sincerity and the submission and the sanctification of the Christian. Receiving all of scripture for our transformation. Look at Galatians chapter 4, verse 30. Nevertheless, what says the scriptures? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, and the son of the, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir of the son of the free woman. In Romans chapter 4, looking at verse 3. But what says the scripture? Look at that. All the time, you're in Galatians, what says the scriptures? You're in Romans, what says the scriptures? You're in the house fellowship, what says the scripture? You're in the local church, what says the scriptures? You're at the headquarters, what says the scriptures? You are in another local church every time. What says the scripture? It's a Sunday service or a Monday Bible study or Tuesday leadership development or Saturday workers training or Thursday revival hour. Every time the important question is, what says the scripture? We don't gather the people together to give them opinions of men, ideas of men, motivational talk. For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Then in verse 4, it tells us now, to him that walketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Then in verse 5, but to him that walketh not, who does not come to presage his own self-righteousness, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Look at chapter 11, verse 2. Romans 11, verse 2. God has not cast away his people, which if on you, what ye not, what the scripture says, you see that all the time, you are considering the studies of the end time, whether the Jews will still come back into the kingdom or not, go back to the scriptures. It says, don't you know what the scripture says? Of Elias, Elijah, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Verse 3 Lord, they have killed thy prophets, 
and dig down thine altars and I am left alone and they seek my life verse 4 then tells us it says but what says the answer of God unto him I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Verse 5 then tells us, even so then at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, for if the first fruits be holy, if Christ a savior, if Christ the forerunner of our faith, if the first fruit be holy, the lamb is also holy. And if the root, the root and the offspring of David, Christ, if the root be holy, so are the branches. Look at second, uh, first Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men. You weigh them. The word of God, the word of men. There are people who follow after the word of men. Their lives, their comportment, their character, their hope, everything based on the word of men. They'll be disappointed on the final day. Were it possible for you? To read all the books of all the libraries of the world and to sink yourself into the opinions and ideologies of the authors of the books of the world and get much knowledge about the words of men. It will be a waste of your time and you'll discover that in eternity because the word of God is that one solitary only book that points us to heaven and so the Thessalonians when they received the word of God they gave the attention they ought to have on the word as the word of God and not the word of men and then it says it effectually worketh in us it effectually works salvation in us. It effectually works sanctification in us. It effectually works empowerment of the Spirit in us. It, it works in us and it puts us on the straight path that leads to glory. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, the identity of two types of sons. The identity of two types of sons. It tells us about the one that was born after the flesh. And then tells us about the one that was born after the spirit. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, we're looking at nominal sons born after the flesh into sinfulness. Nominal, carnal fleshly not having the spirit of god or the nature of god in them nominal sons born after the flesh into sinfulness number two new sons begotten by faith after the spirit number three nourished sons bearing the fruit of the spirit Look at number one. Number one, nominal sons born after the flesh into sinfulness. Galatians chapter 4 verse 23. 
but he who was, who was of the bond, man, bond woman was born after the flesh was born after the flesh look at verse 29 in verse 29 but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit in the one that was born after the flesh there is an innate hatred for the promise in what hatred for the spirit in what hatred for the character and for the new life that comes by the spirit and so he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit it says it was like that then even so it is now even so it is now the one born after the flesh will ridicule the one born after the flesh will hate the one born after the flesh will throw stones the one born after the flesh will be little the one born after the spirit look at romans chapter 9 verse 6 romans chapter 9 verse 6 not as though the word of god has taken on effect for they are not all israel who are of Israel. They are not all Israel who are of Israel. Look at verse 7. Neither because they are born, they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children? Neither because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children? The Jews didn't understand that at the time of Christ. When Christ said, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They said, We be born of Abraham. How sayest thou, We shall be made free? Oh, he said, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever and it is only when the son shall make you free that he shall be free indeed they said we'll be not born of fornication we were born of abraham i said if you were born of abraham you will do the works of abraham abraham rejoiced to see my days and it saw it and he rejoiced and you go about to kill me and they said who goes about to kill you we are the children of abraham he said no that would they said when the sons of god he said no he said you of your father the devil and the works of your father ye will do he was a murderer from the beginning and he abode not in the truth and when he tells a lie he speaks of his own for he is a liar and the father of each the lord jesus christ was telling them yes you are jews but your character does not show that you are born again that you are renewed you are still of the flesh you are nominal children that's why he said neither because they are seed they are the seed of abraham are they all children but in isaac shall thy seed be called it tells us in verse 8 in verse 8 it tells us that he is they which are the children of the flesh these are not the children of god born by abraham 
born by a religious man even a righteous man that doesn't make anyone a real child of god that is they which are the children of the flesh these are not the children of god but the children of the promise they are counted for the seed it tells us in john chapter 3 reading from verse 6 john 3 verse 6 that which is born of the flesh is flesh that which is born of the flesh is flesh what does that mean he'll be filthy what does that mean he will be lustful what does that mean he'll be envious what does that mean? He will be selfish and sinful. What does that mean? He will be haughty, just human. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Galatians chapter 5, reading from verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Those who are born of the flesh, those who are not born of the spirit, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, verse 20, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, verse 21. Envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you also in time past, that they which do such things, churchgoers, religious people, born of the flesh, not born again, not born of the Spirit, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Look at number two here. New sons begotten by faith after the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac, are the children of promise we brethren we will look at the promise of god whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved and we get into that promise we hold onto that promise we believe that promise and that promise works in us Except a man be born again, born anew, born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Ye must be born again. We look at that promise of God, the proclamation of Christ, and we desire being born again. Desire transformation. Desire the new life. We are the children of promise and then it says that you have stayed from all appearance of evil and the very god of peace sanctify you holy your body your soul your spirit and be preserved in that holiness and sanctification until the coming of christ faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it we hold on to that promise we accept that promise we believe that promise we consecrate for that promise and then in us there is a new transformation we are the children of promise tarry in jerusalem until you be endear with power from on high because I send the promise of the Father 
unto you but John truly really baptized with water unto repentance but ye shall be baptized in mass empowered in the Holy Ghost and we tarry we believe him and because of that the promise is fulfilled unto us the children of promise we live by the promise we stand by the promise we pray in this promise we labor in the promise it says now we brethren are as i seek was the children of promise it tells us in first peter chapter one looking at verse three first peter chapter one verse three blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again begotten us again who are born by human parents but now by the promise of the lord were begotten again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead verse 23 it tells us the consequence being born again being born again being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abideth forever liveth and abideth forever the same word the same power that made those apostles to be born again in the first century that same word abides today because it liveth and abideth forever it tells us in first john chapter 5 verse 1 first john chapter 5 verse 1 whosoever believeth that jesus is the christ is born of god born of god these are not nominal worshipers nominal church goers nominal christians who just uh, you know come to church and their lives are negative and their lives are kind of uh, nonchalant and they do not have the spirit of god these are people that have come to god and they prayed and they saw the face of the lord and an heavenly oppression was done in them and they believed to the point of being born of god and everyone that loved him that begat loved him also that is begotten of him look at verse 2 in verse 2 by this we know that we love the children of god when we love god and keep his commandments we love god and keep his commandments it's not like you know people who think you know they don't have to keep the commandment of god i'm saved i'm saved i'm born again i'm a child of god i'm a member of the church and therefore no matter what i do obedient disobedient incorrigible i'll still get there no that's the wrong spirit the person who is going to get to heaven and the person who is going to be acceptable in the sight of the lord must love god and keep his commandments look at verse 3 in verse 3 for this is the love of god that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous look at verse 4 in verse 4 he tells us for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Verse 18. In verse 18, we know that whosoever, we know that whosoever at that time, at this time, we know that whosoever in this church or in that other church, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Number three here. Number three, nourished sons, bearing 
the fruit of the spirit nourished nourished in the faith nourished in the word nourished by the spirit nourished in the scripture of truth we're looking at first timothy chapter 4 verse 6 if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. If preacher, pastor, teacher, minister, if you put the brethren in remembrance of these things, not only one thing, healing, healing, healing all the time, not only one thing, deliverance, miracle, all the time. Not only one thing, signs and wonders, all the time. No, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, salvation, new creature in Christ, living by the grace of God, having the purity of heart, pursuing and seeking, the first thing, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Leaving all those other things to be added. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained. Verse 16. In verse 16, it says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself, preacher, teacher, minister, worker. If you don't do this, you're not even save yourself. If you don't tell the sinners, what it means to be saved, tell the believers what it means to be steadfast in the way, in the word of God. If you don't, you might jeopardize your chance of getting over there. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Nourished sons bearing the fruit of the Spirit. What well, the fruit of the Spirit? Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, not hatred. Love not mixed with duplicity love pure love transparent the fruit of the spirit is love not mixed with the policies of the world not lost not unclean affection love the fruit of the spirit is love joy not joy in evil not joy in seeing other people suffer joy pure joy christ-like joy peace not peace that covers a seared conscience my conscience does not condemn me my conscience does not condemn me. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> not that one. The one that is real. That you are not doing evil. And evil does not pinch your heart, punch your heart, prick your heart. You're free. Because you are free from sin. You have the love and the joy and the peace, long suffering. That means persecution will come. You'll not abandon the ministry because of persecution, long suffering. You'll not abandon 
earnestly contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints because of persecution, long suffering, gentleness. Even though you suffer, you're still gentle, you don't threaten, you don't slap anybody, you don't do any evil to anybody, you're still gentle goodness, and your goodness continues, they hurt you, but you have the fruit of the Spirit. Those are the renewed sons and the nourished sons in the faith, bearing the fruit of the Spirit. And faith, verse 23, you have faith and you have meekness and temperance against such. There is no law. And then in verse 24, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 9. Ephesians 5, verse 9, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Verse 10, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, not what is acceptable to your gang, a gang in college, not what is acceptable to the neighbors around you who are not born again, not what is acceptable to your colleagues in the same profession who don't have any principle of righteousness proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And then in verse 11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 11. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11, now no chastening, for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby and then in verse 12 wherefore lift up the hands that hang down and the feeble knees verse 13 and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed verse 14 for the peace with all men, all men in your community, all men in your household, all men wherever you live, lift up your eyes. You are going to heaven. And the path towards heaven is the path of peace and if those who forget it you know the path of peace if they live around you you're not going to allow the failure of a weak person to rub off on you and to make you as weak as them if you are up and you are for the peace of the kingdom you're not going to allow the peace the people that don't have any peace in their heart and they wonder why you are so unruffled and you are wondering and you are living in the peace of God and so they want to jolt you and jerk you and do something you don't want them to pull you down to their level you want to remain in the peace of God peace with God and peace with everyone follow peace and uh, with all men and holiness you don't trade holiness with peace okay if i live in holiness the people make trouble for me if i talk holiness they make trouble for me so i want peace i want to you know live a serene life a peaceful life you're not going to trade holiness with peace or peace with holiness and say okay if um, living in holiness does not allow me to have peace i drop holiness that means you drop heaven. You can't do that. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I will not drop holiness. I will not drop holiness. You will not drop holiness in Jesus' name. 
We're coming now to point number three. Point number three, the inheritance of true saints. We're looking at three points here. Yeah, we're looking at this one three perspective. Number one, the forfeited inheritance of fleshly, of a fleshly son. Number two, the full inheritance for faithful saints. Number three, the final inheritance for firm steadfastness. Let's look at number one there. Number one, the forfeited inheritance of fleshly sons. We're looking at uh, Galatians chapter 4 verse 30. Nevertheless, what says the scripture? Cast out the bond woman and her son for the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman if you are bound by bad habits even in this life you lose your inheritance if you are bound by unexpected rascal behavior even at school you lose the inheritance the certificate what you went for there if you are bound by disrespectful habitual naughtiness even in life the father who is about to die who is right in the wheel you will lose the inheritance and in the kingdom of God it will become sinful self-centered carnal disobedient and rebellious we forfeit our inheritance because we remain as fleshly carnal evil filthy sinful church goers it tells us nevertheless what says the scripture cast out the bondwoman and her son for the son of the bondwoman jesting ridiculing and deriding both Sarah and the son Isaac that son shall not be heir of the son of the free woman. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Hebrews 12, verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fall, fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. And thereby many be defiled in verse 16 lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright verse 17 for ye know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. If we go the way of Esau, the way of the carnal, the way of the fleshly, and the way of the greedy and the way of the sinful and the way of the backslider we lose the blessing we should have inherited. We might work very hard, might work kind of industriously, but if our lives, our hearts, conduct, experience, if they do not reflect the grace of God from the heart, and we're like Esau. We we'll sell off a birthright, we we'll forfeit the inheritance. In Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 1, Hebrews 2 verse 1, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed 
to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. Verse 2. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? That's why as we come to the Bible study, after the Bible study, we're given chance to pray so that if there's anything to repent of, the Spirit of God will bring to our mind and will repent. That's why after listening to the Word of God, it's incumbent important for us that we'll check up our lives if we're backsliding, that we'll come back to the Lord. If there is anything to correct in our lives, make restitution about at the time when the Spirit is still speaking to our heart, we make the restitution and we rectify everything that needs to be rectified. Because how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. We're looking at number two here. Number two, the full inheritance for faithful saints. Acts chapter 2 verse 32 Chapter 20 Acts chapter 20 verse 32 And now brethren I commend you To God And to the word Of his grace Which is able to build You up The word of his grace Able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. Give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. Obviously, you must have left the camp of the sinful before you can come to the inheritance of the sanctified. You must have come out of the camp of the depraved and of the defiled and of the defiant. You must have come out of that camp and come out to the camp of the sanctified before you can have an inheritance among them which are sanctified. That's the calling of the Lord in Acts chapter 26, verse 18. Acts 28, 26, verse 18. To open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God. Turn them, turn them, turn them. The ministry of the preacher is to turn the hearers, turn them away from carnality into Christ likeness. Turn them away from the self centered life to the sacrificial life of Christ. Open their eyes, turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. You are turned before you receive the forgiveness of sin. You cannot keep your mind, your heart, your eyes, your focus on sin and refuse to repent. And then you say, I'm forgiven, I'm free. Uh -uh. Freedom does not come that way. Their eyes are opened. They are turned from darkness to light. They are turned from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them 
which are sanctified by faith sanctified by faith sanctified by faith faith in Christ let's look at number three number three here the final inheritance for firm steadfastness the people were steadfast in the Lord first Peter chapter 1 we're looking at verse 3 in first Peter chapter 1 verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again born again born again has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and then in verse 4 to an inheritance incorruptible all the inheritance of earth are corruptible they fade away all the price of the world the crown of the world the rewards of the world the inheritance of the world they fade away but when you are born again and you abide in Christ in that experience of being born again then you are brought to an, an inheritance incorruptible on undefiled that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you that's why it's good to get to heaven reserved in heaven for you then he tells us in verse 5 who are kept by the power of God through faith are kept are kept they don't wobble go in come out they remain they abide they are steadfast in the kingdom of God they don't allow the cord of the temptation of Satan the cord of the temptations and trials of society to pull them away they abide they are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time I pray you will not miss that heaven I will not miss that heaven you will not miss it in Jesus name but you must be born again and abide in the grace of God and live the life by the grace of God until the end of time so that when the time comes from earth you go to heaven and forever and ever you'll be there in Jesus name let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer we've heard the word of God and we need to pray to him so that the grace of God will come into our lives abide in our lives and we'll keep on walking in righteousness and holiness before him all the days of our lives and then when the time comes it will take us to heaven. Yes.